You know, Nigerians have been forward looking as regards uh, this administration's stance in the fight against corruption, which is captured in their eight point agenda. But uh, one thing I found very you know, interesting is when Mr. Olukoyede was being screened, he said the anti graft war should, stand, it should start from the National Assembly. <laughs> you know, we are looking at the task ahead of it. And I felt when the lawmakers heard this, uh, they were still able to confirm him. Is it to say that you know, Nigeria is getting rid of corruption? I have made the point before, and a few months ago when I was here, I said so. Nigeria is a country of high drama. When there was the issue of um, the minister who they say did not complete her NYSC and all that, I made that point. Who is talking about that now? Mm. Now, when the chairman of the SPC was first appointed, there are many people who didn't know Olani Pekungulukoyode, but all you heard was that ah, a Yoruba man is heading the agency for the first time. A particular Part of the country has always headed that agency. Oh, he's a pastor, he's a Christian. These are the inanities we involve ourselves in, which has ultimately ensured that Nigeria is where it is. Now, coming to the Senate, that same Senate confirmed him, right? All right. That's right. He made two profound statements, and I am happy he's a lawyer. I believe and I think things will change. He said everything he will do will be in accordance with the rule of law. If he actually does so, then we might be on the path, on the path to properly fighting corruption. When he told the senators that he was probably going to start with them, what did they do? They all burst out laughing because they know that in our Nigeria, he will be unable to do so however much he tries. Really? See, yes, <laughs> we not since, since the anti graft Commission was set up by the Olusha Gumba Sanjo administration. Have we not all been here? How many convictions, high-profile convictions, have we had? Even the ones they managed to get, what happened? People were pardoned. People were patted on the back. How many senators have been investigated for corruption? Did this stop them from gravitating from governors to senators? It's a hard task. It's a difficult ask. His job is cut out for him. But what I know is that if people understand what the rule of law really is, and he, if he makes good his promise to do everything according to the rule of law, we might then begin to make progress. And fight corruption in Nigeria, what does the rule of law entail? The rule of law entails that he has the power and he's able to even investigate the president who appointed him. Can he do that in Nigeria? But the president has immunity. Immunity. If he has immunity, there are issues over which a president can even be investigated while still in office, even if you can't prosecute the president right now. Okay, within what context would that be? For example, you, did you hear the Watergate scandal in 1974 in the United States? President Nixon sat on general, investigated him. In fact, he removed one, Akibot, for another. The one he appointed continued the investigation. When the heat became too much, he was going to be impeached or whatever, and he resigned. So those things are possible only, only if we do it under the context of the rule of law. And I'm excited that he's a lawyer and he has been pointed the rule of law as the way to go. People have expressed a level of worry as to the mandate. The mandate of the AFCC is clear cut. <laughs> But in reality, how well will they, will the chairman, in whoever the chairman is, how well will he do his job? Especially since, yes, he's appointed by the president, subject to Senate confirmation, but then there is a snag. I don't know whether you would agree it's a snag. The, the, the existence of the Attorney General of the Federation. A former chairman had issues with the AGF at the time. And now, in this context, do you see that as a, as a hurdle? for him because after all the assumption is that he's subject so to speak to the agf yes <clears throat> if there is sincerity of purpose those offices should complement each other but in nigeria things never and ever as they seem some of us have advocated before now and we still do so that the office of the attorney general of the federation and even those of the states is too political 
separate that office. Let us have an attorney general who is solely the chief law officer of the Federation and get a minister for justice. The minister will be the political appointee of the president who takes care of whatever political administrative arm that the presidency wants. If you clearly have an attorney general who is solely chief legal officer of the Federation, then it will give a leeway to the EFCC chairman, whoever that is, to do his job without necessarily pandering to the political whims and caprices of the Attorney General of the Federation and Commissioner for, and the Minister for Justice who reports to the President. Mm. You already, at the beginning, you expressed optimism about Uluko Ide that, you know, being a lawyer and all of that. But other critics believe that because he was not an assistant, inspector, uh, assist, assistant commissioner of police, uh, he might not be able to do the job. And this speaks to the fact that you said over the years, since the creation of the EFCC, have they been able to, you know, prosecute certain, you know, cases, you know, to logical conclusion? Yes. So he now being a lawyer, do you not feel that might be a setback, or do you expect that he will even do better than his predecessors? Mm. Yes, I, I said I was excited that he's a lawyer, and I say so advisedly. Now, as a lawyer, he understands the law. He has started on a good footing by harping on the rule mm -hmm. of law as a focal point of whatever he does at the EFCC. Now, uh, the, the question of qualification, I think Nigerians, as they say, sometimes they say they play, we play too much. Mm. What does the EFCC Act says, and it is disheartening that even senior lawyers come and argue this. The EFCC Act says rank of ASP or an equivalent, cognitive experience of 15 years. Well, look where as he is, is two times qualified, twice over, to be a judge of the high court or a federal high court. He's been a lawyer for 10 years. By, manner, by the manner of his training and the experience he has had, if you're in private practice, you cannot but have that experience. How then is such a man who is qualified to hold high office as a high court judge, not qualified to head the commission? When the commission uh, establishment act says that a, a, a sorry, a, Assistant Commissioner of Police or oh. someone of equivalent rank. So I think the fact that he's a lawyer, I think the fact that he's been at the EFCC for a while, I think the fact that he understands That's what the country is now, I think the fact that he also knows from what he has seen that the anti-corruption war has tottered severally or several times. I think we can cut him some slack and give him the benefit of that. I think he will do. I'm sure you're he will, mindful. He will just be fine.